Behind every remarkable athlete, there stands a great coach. Someone who helps the player reach the next level and achieve incredible results. And it's no different in the business world either. As a leader, if you want your team to excel, you have to learn how to coach them. The big question is, where to begin? What is the playbook for becoming a coaching leader? In this video, I'll give you a three-step guide that will kickstart your journey as your colleague's coach. Follow these steps and you'll notice a significant increase in your team's motivation and development. And stick around till the end of the video, where I share a simple but very powerful bonus tip that will boost the effectiveness of your coaching. Hi, I'm Esther, organizational psychologist, executive coach, and CEO of the Blueberry team. I've been coaching leaders for over 15 years now, and I'm on a mission to help leaders become great coaches of their teams. So let's start with a quick definition. What exactly is coaching? To put it simply, instead of telling people what to do, with coaching, you guide them so that they can come up with their own answers. With this approach, you develop your colleagues' ability to successfully tackle future challenges on their own. What's more, coaching is a great way to boost people's motivation. Most leaders are fully aware of these benefits. They know they should coach more, and still they don't. Why? Because in the daily hustle, coaching takes a backseat. When you're putting out fires nonstop, there is no room for meaningful coaching conversations. So as a first step, you must create the opportunity, the space for such a dialogue. Therefore, step number one, schedule monthly one-on-one -on -one meetings with your colleagues and make them count. Book in at least 45 minutes or preferably even an hour. Now you possibly have regular weekly check-ins with your people, but those are likely status updates, right? Whereas the monthly coaching discussions should be a forum where you don't tackle mundane operative issues, but rather you focus on your colleagues' personal development. Here they can share their dilemmas. There is time for deeper discussions and feedback. A coaching one-on-one -on -one should have a much more relaxed personal atmosphere compared to a status update. I usually invite my colleague for a coffee, so even the setting is informal. Bottom line, make this hour about them, focus on their growth. Now that you've scheduled the monthly one-on-ones, let's move to step number two. Start with a career discussion. In your first coaching meeting, tell your colleague that you would like to have these regular meetings to focus on their growth, to support their development. Then. Have an open discussion about their ambitions, their career goals. Just like a tennis coach must be clued in on their player's career ambitions, likewise, you should also have a clear idea what your colleagues' ambitions are in order to help them grow. Some people might be quite fuzzy on their professional aspirations. Well, then help them find it, explore them together, because these ambitions can work like a powerful fuel for personal development and motivation. Here are a few great questions you should discuss with your team members at these career discussions. What parts of your job do you enjoy the most? And what parts of your job drain your energy? Where do you see yourself in a couple of years time? What would be an ideal job for you? In which areas would you like to develop yourself? Where can I help you grow? Talk about these questions until you both have a clear vision of your colleagues' aspirations. Now, some managers are really concerned about letting the genie out of the bottle with such career dialogues. Shouldn't we steer clear of discussing dreams that might potentially lead people out of the company? What if they decide to leave? Well, let me share a story with you. Many years ago, I was working at a very nice company as a senior expert. I was quite happy and comfortable. Then one day, a headhunter contacted me, inviting me for an interview. There, as they probed into my long-term career goals, I realized that what I really wanted was actually try myself as a leader. Then they offered me a leadership position, which I accepted. The irony is that I could have become a leader at my original company too, as it later turned out, but we never really talked about my ambitions. The moral of the story, help your colleagues explore their ambitions and help them fulfill them. If you don't do it, someone else will. Okay, so now you've got your scheduled one-on-ones. You understand your colleagues' ambitions and where they need your support. The third step is start listening like a coach. 
Many say that the essence of coaching is asking good questions. I disagree. Listening is way more important. In the last 15 years, after every single coaching session, I asked my clients, what did you find the most valuable about our conversation? Out of more than a thousand responses, what do you think the most common answer was? It was this. It's just so great that I could share all this with someone who listened and understood me. So you see, as a coach, you don't need an arsenal of wonderful coaching questions to support your colleague. Just learn to listen like a coach. And here's how. Firstly, after some opening chit chat, kick off the conversation with one question. For example, how has this last month been for you? Then pay attention to what they say. Listen with your full curiosity and empathy. And from time to time, summarize what you hear to show that you do understand. For example, you can say, it seems that your team is really on fire or sounds like you've had an exhausting month, haven't you? Then stop and listen some more and let them do the talking, the thinking, the exploring of the solutions to their own dilemmas. You'll be amazed how many insights can be triggered by just simply listening. Listening is the most important tool in your coaching toolkit. Use it and sharpen it regularly. In the next video, I'll talk about how to accelerate your colleagues' growth even further by asking questions, by giving coaching style feedback, and by using other handy coaching techniques. But before I say goodbye, let me leave you with a game-changing bonus tip. And that is, take coaching notes. You see, in the laid-back personal context of coaching, leaders often overlook jotting down the key takeaways. And then, of course, later they forget about them. But if you document these during or after each chat, you'll uncover many patterns and recurring themes. Your notes then will help you follow your colleague's personal learning journey very, very closely. These one-on-ones wouldn't just remain a bunch of random disconnected chats, but rather milestones in your direct reports development path. Personally, I keep a document for each of my direct reports coaching. And here, I also jot down any feedback I want to remember to share with them. The simple act of regular note-taking makes our coaching discussions much richer and generally more useful for my colleagues. If you like this video, stay tuned because the next episode will be coming out in a couple of weeks' time. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and check out our other leadership videos. See you soon.